<laughs> but uh, I've got to ask a question. Uh, okay. In the uh, after like two thousand and one, I became very much a casual fan. It just wasn't for me, and plus with school and social life and uh, and all that sort of uh, legal problems. <laughs> okay. Uh, getting. Uh, I was veering in and out, and you would watch stuff, and you'd be like, "We wait, what the fuck? This this person's a heel, this person's a thing." And then uh, ECW One Night Stand happened, the, the pay per view that was fucking unbelievable. <clears throat> it's uh, everybody loved it. I remember watching it live. Then the year later, they did a repeat, or, or not a repeat, another version, and they brought back ECW, and it was what it was. But uh, the question I've got to ask you is, uh, what's it like? Uh, having to deal with Vince McMahon because from what I've read and heard it, it just sounds like a nightmare where you're always trying to impress the guy who's yeah. consistently looking down on everyone anyway so uh, from your personal experience uh, how was it? My time there was very short and um, very undesirable I wasn't a ha happy camper um, I did the pay-per-view in 2005 and just thought it was a one-off and nothing else would come of it. It was nostalgia. You know, we got a nice payday from it. And then a year later, I get a phone call from Tommy Dreamer and he says, oh, we're getting the boys back together. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he says, they're going to make ECW. They're going to do another version. And I'm just like, oh my God. Now I'm 34 years old at this time. Okay. So I'm getting up there in age. And he, the way Tommy pitched it was that my character would be exactly the same as it was for Paul. I would be a manager. I might be a mouthpiece for somebody because I, you know, I, I can talk. Maybe they'll put me with somebody who doesn't have great mic skills. I don't know. He just said, you're going to do, you're going to be a manager. If you want to take the bumps, you can take the bumps. What do you think? So I'm just like thinking, well, this is probably going to be my last big run because I'm 34, you know, don't have much time left. This might be an opportunity for me to make some money. So I remember telling him I'll sign for a year. And he was like, Oh, they want you for three years. Cause they want to know you're loyal. I was just like, oh my God, I knew I wasn't going to last for three years because I have had friends that work there and I know what goes on. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't green anymore. I'd been in the business 13 years at this point. So I kind of knew what was happening. So I remember saying, okay. And he said, we're going to mail you your contract. All right, fine. I hang up. Axel Rotten calls me and he's like, did you just get a call? And I was like, yeah. And he's just like, here we go again. And I said, my gut tells me not to do this. And he's like, well, what does your head tell you? And I said, my head's telling me make the money. And he said, well, make the money. So I said, okay. So I sign on and I'm telling you nothing that Tommy said was true. And it wasn't Tommy's fault. Cause I feel like, I feel like Tommy was told something and then it was just like never going to happen. I kind of felt like Tommy was a pawn in everything. I could be a hundred percent wrong, but when I got there, all they wanted me to do was bikini contest, which I've never done ever. I never had in my twenties. I never had to do the bikini bullshit. So now I'm mid thirties. Right. And they pair me up with Barbie blank, beautiful little blonde. She's 19 years old. Kelly Kelly, 19 years old, right out of a, yes. uh, she's four to 10 in bed, by the way, I just started mentioning that. That joke never gets old. Just letting you know. Um, they tell me, always have bikinis with you because this is what you're going to do. Now, if Tommy pitched that to me over the phone, I would have never signed that contract, money or no money, because that was bullshit. Uncomfortable, didn't like doing it. Um, I can work. I bring value. I know what I can do. Walking around a ring in a bikini, come on. That wasn't what I wanted to do. So I got frustrated. And I, I would go to Johnny Ace and I would say, Johnny, this isn't what I signed up for. Please, can you do something? You know, can I? And you pitch ideas because that's what you do. And he's just like, oh, you know, just be patient. Things are going to happen. Da, 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 da. So I'm just like, this is a bunch of bullshit. So I remember I started to cry 
because I'm very emotional. I don't know if you know that about me, but I get emotional sometimes. And I sat in Johnny's office and I begged him for my release. Please release me. Send me home now. I will go home right now. We're not sending you home. I said, please send me home. You're not using me here. You're not using me the way I want to be used. I don't want to be here. I want to go home. And he's like, you know what? Dry your tears. Go back to catering and relax and let me see what I can do. So I go to catering and then uh, we have to get our draws. So we're all in line to get a draw. And I hear, excuse me, Francine, can I speak with you? And it's Vince. And I just about shit my pants. And because uh, before then, I've always, you know, you shake his hand and you have small talk. Hi, how are you? And that's it. I've never really had a conversation with Vince. So I turn around and he's like, get your draw and we'll take a walk around the building. Will you take a walk with me? And I was like, yes, sir. So <laughs> I get my draw and I'm walking around this building because it was a TV taping. I'm walking around the building and he tells me, he goes, you're a beautiful girl. But beautiful girls are a dime a dozen. And I don't know what you can do. And I looked right at him and I said, didn't you buy our tape library? Don't you have access to like everybody's work? And he goes, I don't watch it. And I'm thinking to myself, well, you hired all these people and you don't know what I can do. Like you don't know what any of us can do because you don't know ECW. Right. So Shane McMahon was, a, from what I was told, a huge mark for ECW. He knew everybody's characters. Uh, he knew all the storylines. He knew what everybody was capable of. But then I got Vince, who says he doesn't know anything. So he's got all he's got his staff investigating all that kind of stuff. So Vince tells me, listen, this is what you're going to do. You're going to come to the next TV, which I think was raw. And he said, and whenever you see me, you are going to run and you're going to smack me on my back and you're going to say, hey, Vince, what do you got for me? And I go, OK. And he goes, are you going to do it? And I go, sure, Vince, I'll do it. And he goes, OK. He goes, well, then I'll see you. I'll see you at the next taping. And he walks away from me. So now I'm sitting there like, what? The hell just happened. Like, I have to go smack this man on his back. That's what he told me to do, right? But before this happened, I had, and I'm not going to name names, so don't even ask me, but I had someone higher up tell me what you need to do is you need to wear a low cut top so your breasts are out and you need to put oil on your chest. You need to knock on his door and lean over his desk and say, Vince, you know, what can I do for you? What? And I said, uh uh. I don't do that. Never had to sleep with Paul for my spot. Never had to sleep with anyone for a spot. I'm not doing that. He goes, well, the other girls do it. I said, then let the other girls do it because I'm not doing it. That's not how I roll. That's not my thing. I'd rather be sent home, you know? So then I'm, you know, this thing happens with Vince. So we go to Monday Night Raw, which I think might have been like a week later, a Monday, the Monday after or whatever. And I see him and he's standing with like five guys in suits. I don't even know who they are. Well, I go run down the hallway like a lunatic because I said, well, it's now or never. And I, I might as well embarrass myself because nobody's using me here and I don't know what's going on. And I smacked him really, really hard in front of all these people. And he looks down at me and I go, hey, Vince, what do you got for me tonight? And he looks at me and he goes, that's my girl. And he hugged me and he walked away. And once again, I'm standing there dumbfounded because I don't know what's going on. So I just walked back and I go, <laughs> I go to the locker room. I sit in the locker room and Johnny Ace tells me, you know, you're, you're kind of like, you're like paint, been watching paint dry. And I go, well, what does that mean? He goes, not the way you work. He goes back here. I don't politic. That was the problem. I'm not politicking. I'm not out there. I would go to the locker room. I brought a book with me. I would read my book. I went to catering. I sat with the ECW guys because those were my friends. That's who I felt comfortable with. I never ran around trying to get myself over in politics. I'd always hide in the locker room. And Johnny's like, it's like watching paint dry. You just, you, you're not doing anything. I said, well, put me to work and I'll show you what I can do. Like it shouldn't be, 
your backstage persona. I'm, I go and I say hello to everyone. I, 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 I'm following etiquette. You know what I mean? I'm doing the right things. I'm just like not going, I'm not going to backstab and I'm not going to lean over a desk with oil on my chest. Like that's not me. You know what I mean? It's like, it was different up there. It was something I wasn't used to. So Tuesday night, the next night was, it was SmackDown ECW. We were on a combined show for our, our taping. So SmackDown was live, ECW was taped. And I just happened to look at the, uh, the paper was taped to the wall. My name was on the paper. So smacking Vince on the back worked. And now they have me on TV and they paired me with Balls Mahoney which I was fine with. I didn't care who I worked with. I got along with Balls great. He was a good friend of mine. Everything was fine. They put us on TV. They put us on a loop on house shows. Johnny Ace was there. Vince was not. And Johnny said, the reaction you and Balls got was great. We're going to keep it going. I said, great. Now I don't have to do the stupid bikini stuff anymore. I was thrilled. Well, they do a piss test the next weekend. And Balls had something some kind of drug that they found in his pee. He gets taken off the road. I get a phone call, pack your bathing suit. And I'm just like, what the hell? I was so mad. Uh, initially, I was told I was going to be paired with Test. And we were going to be this big monster heel duo, you know? Never happened. Um, you mean to tell me there wasn't one guy that they could have put me with that would have made sense? You know what I mean? So I had to get a bikini and I had to keep doing this stupid shit over and over again. And it just mentally started to get to me and I just wasn't happy. And I just kept telling everyone, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. So finally I get the call. We, we have nothing for you. And I was like, you might've, if you tried, <laughs> but you didn't care, you know? And, and I honestly feel like if you're not homegrown or you're not, constantly pushing yourself in their faces, nothing's going to happen, you know, and I am not one to just, like I said, I'm not going to lower myself to go and do something as stupid as rub stuff on my chest and try to seduce Vince McMahon or whatever the hell they wanted me to do. It's not happening. Well, if I ever met Vince, I would seduce him just for the fun of it because I don't want to work there. Yeah. 